we're studying those things that we cannot corporally, physically uh, see and understand, but from history and from the Word of God, we know they're there. We also know they're fallen angels, and maybe in this study sometime, we will get to the fallen angels. They're those that left their first estate, the Bible calls it. And they gave themselves over to lust and uh, all kinds of uh, wicked things, and they were removed from heaven. And they're not there anymore. But you and I wish to study especially uh, these that are the messages of God for us. Our lesson at this moment uh, is on page 14, beginning in, uh, in the point call number four, the effect of angels on the lives of men. It would take a whole syllabus, I think, to, uh, to go through that because I've been reading of the last few days activities of angels that are simply amazing. Uh, we'll be preaching about one in the l later service today. Uh, and so uh, the effect they had on the, uh, on the lives of humans are, tr are simply tremendous. Angels are active. They're active in the lives of persons. Uh, they're also active in the family way, to where the family participates in. Uh, an angel appeared unto uh, a woman and... She told her husband he didn't believe it, so the angel had to appear to him too to get him to believe. And, and so it is possible for angels to, to, to function, not only for a person, but for a group of people. They can function over, over urban areas like cities. And, and uh, we find in the Word of God where it was the angels that brought destruction upon Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, and, and so uh, they function in, in larger capacities, and we believe that they function over entire nations. Uh, in a negative way, they do. There are nations under the under the awful, awful, awful power of, uh, of, of of demon of demon forces, and and so uh, it, it it is true. Angels, I have to do uh, eg eg executive judgment. On, on the behalf of God. If God says you go and do that, then they have to obey God, and they do that. For example, in Genesis 19 and 11, it says, and they, they, smote, they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness. Now, this was done in Sodom, and most of the city was there, the Bible says. Thousands of people were there, and it, and it says the angels of God, uh, the angel uh, smote that entire group with blindness. Uh, we, we haven't studied, we haven't penetrated all that took place in Sodom. For example, the whole city was destroyed in blindness. They did not see the fire. They only felt it because they were still blind from the night before. And, and so uh, what, a, what a terrible thing, not only to die, but don't know what way to run either uh, because you have been struck blind. And that was done by an angel. Uh, God did not do it. An angel did it. He says, uh, he struck them both small and great so that they wearied themselves to find the door. And, 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 and so we find that uh, here were uh, angels bringing the judgment of God upon the ungodly who, who, who wished to destroy. They wanted to destroy those angels but they were not permitted to do so. Then if you go to the New Testament and the book of Revelation, which is the last book of the Bible, in chapter 15 and verse 1, it says, And I saw another sign in the heavens, a great and marvelous seven angels. Here were angels functioning together. Not that one couldn't have done the whole job, but here were seven angels functioning together, having the seven last plagues so in, in the time of the Great Tribulation, uh, when, when, when it will be terrible during the final three and a half years of, of the Great Tribulation and the rule of the Antichrist, it, it says that there are seven specific angels and they c carried with them the ability uh, to bring the seven final judgments up, upon mankind. That's what it says right here uh, in, in verse one of the last plagues. For in them... 
is filled up the wrath of God. So these angels brought with them how God was feeling about sin, how God was feeling about rebellion, how God was feeling about people that says there is no God, there is no God, and if there was one, I wouldn't follow him anyway. Uh, and, and so they had the spirit of God in them, which was against sin and transgression and rebellion against, against the most high God. The, the presence of angels causes men uh, uh, to tremble. Uh, I personally have not seen an angel. I've asked to see angels, uh, but I have not seen an angel. But I, it, maybe I could have seen one. Uh, w one time in Florida when I was a, a young man, I went into the woods at night and I prayed with such intensity that the presence of the of the unknown became so great, I jumped up and ran home, went into my room and closed the door and locked it, and then got into bed. <laughs> now, well, you say, well, that's funny. If you would have been there, it wouldn't have been funny. I was trembling from top to bottom, goosebumps on top of the goosebumps. I had come into contact with the with a spirit of heaven so great until I didn't feel I had the capacity to deal with it. And so I ran away. I ran away from it. If I had had courage or maybe a little more age uh, and, 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 and could have stayed with it, we don't know what would have been manifested. But I, I was not capable of re remaining there for the manifestation of whatever God wanted to do. And that's happened uh, just two or three times in my, in my whole life. One time in this city, I prayed with such intensity, I had to beg God to save me because I thought I was going to die. Just through prayer. I wasn't sick. And, and so the, the, the air, there are areas of depth in God that you can reach into that you can't handle. Um, here, Daniel, however great he was, look in Daniel 10 and 11. It says, And the angel said unto me, Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the, the words that I speak unto you. And, and, and stand upright. The angel, in the presence of the angel, he was down on the, on the ground, on his face. For unto you I am sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. I stood trembling. Oh, you say, I wouldn't tremble. No, but you can be ignorant. I can see that. Uh... You've never known the presence of God with, with, with such austerity, with, with, with such amazing strength. Uh, but you do sometime if you ever in, intensely pray until you get into that, uh, into that world, that, that world of anointing and blessing uh, and prayer. You will tremble, I can assure you that. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for... From the first day that you prayed, thou, thou didst set thine heart to, to understand and to, and to chasten thyself before the Lord. Now, some of us want to know how to get things from God. I ought to read the Bible for it rather than talking to your neighbors because the Bible has much clearer answers. Now, he says, from the day that you, uh, you set your heart to understand... You know, he was going to enter into another area of knowledge that he had never had before. He says, when you set your heart to understand and, and, and you began to ch chasten yourself, uh, that meant that he was doing without his food. That meant he was not keeping his office hours. That meant that he had moved into a dimension of, of beating the self down, of beating the flesh down until the spirit was reigning on the inside of him. It chasing thyself before Jehovah. Thy words were heard, and I am come uh, for thy words. And, and that was the one where they had had a, a battle with the prince of Persia for 21 days before he got there. Now, these are things we don't understand either. How an angel from heaven, this was Michael, uh, has such a combat. Uh, with uh, satanic forces, with Lucifer himself, that he was delayed in answering that prayer because of... So this means that you and I may not realize the conflict that taking place over us. 
especially you that are prayer warriors, uh, that we may not realize the, the battleground that we are. And sometimes things happen to us, you say, why? Well, get on your knees and find out why. You know, you might be in the middle of a battle and get knocked around and you don't know you're at war yet. So you know that you're at war, you don't know how to fight back. And all the people said, and says, I am come. So here was a man who trembled. Here was a man who feared. And so the presence of angels can bring situations absolutely unusual to our hearts and lives. Number five, uh, angels' extent of authority. Um, angels are organized into degrees of authority. Colossians 1.16 says, uh, For by him were all things created that were created in the heavens, in the earth, visible, invisible, whether they be thrones, that's one power, where someone sits on a throne and rules, whether it be dominions, that's a delegated power. You go and do this and you have dominion to do it. Or where it be principalities, an area over which a prince presides. Or where it be powers of some sort uh, that has been delivered unto you. All things were created by him and for him. And so there are, there are delegations and there are authorities uh, in the angelic world and uh, we don't perfectly understand them, of course, uh, but we will one day. <laughs> you may be a surprise. You get to heaven, God makes you march every morning. Keep you fit, you know. You, you, you just, just want to know there's a lot more there than you ever thought was there. And it's not going up there sitting in a pink rose bed. I can tell you that right now. Uh, heaven is going to be a place of colossal activity of amazing achievements throughout eternity that, that you're going to really, really enjoy heaven because of all the great things that will be taking place. Now, your number six says angels unlimited in number. And, and this one will, 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 really, will really amaze you. Uh, Daniel saw, he says, a thousand, thousand. As you know, a thousand, thousands is a million, uh, which is 10,000 times 10,000. Now you multiply the thing by 10. And so now you have 100 million. It says here 101 million. And angels are unlimited in their numbers. So there is no way to limit them. Uh, there's no way to count them. Uh, there's no way for you to say, I know how many there are. Uh, he, he saw that many. Uh, and that's a long way out there uh, to see that many. And Daniel 7 and 10, it says uh, that, that there was a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Uh, a thousand, thousands ministered unto him. Ooh, ooh, ooh. A thousand. And then he puts an S on the thing. A thousand, thousand is a million. But you put an S on it, and you don't know how many millions you got, you see. A thousand, thousands. So you don't know how many thousands that we're talking about. That they ministered unto Jehovah. And 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The judgment was set and the book was open. Uh, that's bringing you back into the New Testament when there will be a final judgment of all mankind. And evidently the angels will behold it in Jesus' name. <laughs> And in Luke chapter 2 and verse 13, it says, And suddenly there was with the angel, this was the night that the Lord Jesus was born, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God. Multitude. A multitude of the heavenly hosts. That meant that those shepherds had no way of counting them. That with that one that proclaimed peace on earth, goodwill toward men, then suddenly the whole atmosphere, as far as you could see, were full of these beautiful, beautiful persons. Uh, they were very interested. A Savior was born. A Messiah had come. Isn't it a pity the religious people of that day could not believe, could not believe what these people, other people saw? You don't ever hear people going around town discussing it, saying, well, the, these humble shepherds said, let's go sit at their feet and listen to them. They saw thousands of angels at one time. But you don't hear of that anymore. Uh, it, was, it, was all, it all became history in that one night. Now we have in number seven, angelic actions. 
uh, what all different kinds. If you were to go through the Bible and find out all the things that angels do, you'd come up with another book. For sure you would. You would come up with, a, with another book. Angels guarded, they guarded the tree of life in the Garden of Eden. Uh, so you find them on the first page of the Bible, you see, uh, in Genesis 3, 24. And so he, he drove them out, drove out the man and placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword which turned every, every way to keep the way of the tree of life. And so we find uh, in the beginning of history, as soon as man was turned out of the Garden of Eden, we find these angelic persons working. So they're not something new. It's a pity we don't know more about it. And uh, it is very likely we've had a lot more angelic activity than we're aware of. It could be that that car that was about to hit you, that it was an angel that turned the thing around out of your way. You know, you, you, we just don't give enough attention. You, you, you know, the devil wants to put a word called luck now, that is a word from hell, and it does not mean anything, and it does not exist. There is no luck. Either God helped you or the devil hurt you, one or the other. Uh, that's, the, that's the two forces there is in the, in the world. Uh, and so, uh, uh, I'll, I'll never will forget, during the Great Depression, the Depression was just beginning to come. Uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Hundreds of men were out of work, and they became drifters. They didn't know what to do. They were going to look for a job. And, um, and, and in the homes that I stayed, and this was in my own mother's home uh, before I went out uh, uh, to, uh, for, for preaching, uh, but I ne never knew of one of them. They came to the front door. Now they would knock down, uh, knock out a front window before they come in. But... Uh, Never knew of one that came to the... They were ashamed to. That was the first time in American history that Americans were beggars, you see. They would come to the back door and just tap it a little bit. And if you didn't want to go to the door, they'd leave you going down the street somewhere. But I, when the back door had a tap on it, I went to the door personally, and there was this tall, handsome man. He says, I am hungry, sir. Could I be fed? And though I was just a little kid, I said, yes, sir, come on in. I didn't ask my mother. And, and so he came in and sat down, and my mother came in and said, what do you want to eat? And she cooked him up his food that, 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 he, that he asked for, put it in front of him. But we sat there bewitched, all of us. My mother, who was a very godly woman, uh, we sat there bewitched. He was so gentle. He was so beautiful. He was so lovely you know, and, and, and to look at. And, and he ate his food. He prayed over it. He ate his food. And he was so tender, he, he, he pushed it back and he says, you'll never know how much I thank you. You've been so gracious to me. You have been so kind to me. May, may God bless you. And he slipped out the back door. And my mother looked at me and she said, I believe he's an angel. Go see if you can find him. You want to know something? I looked for him and he wasn't up and down in the street. And nobody in our neighborhood has seen such a, such a man that day. And so it could be that we had an angel for breakfast. Oh, I know, you'd have taken him to McDonald's, wouldn't you? Anyway, we prepared it on our own table. And it was a, there was something about it that was so uplifting inside. Now imagine remembering that since the time you were 12 or 13, you see, uh, years of age. And, that old depression was just sneaking up on us, and men, factories were just closing, and men were just losing their jobs. And now, I mentioned a few moments ago that it was angels who rescued Lot out of Sodom. Uh, you, you can go ahead and read that yourself. But uh, in order for them to be free uh, from Sodom, he, the angels had to grab their hands and pull them out of town. They were so full of sodomy until they had to be pulled out of town and pushed out of town. And all they could get was Lot and his wife and his two daughters. His wife at the city limits looked back. She loved Sodom so much. She had grandchildren there. Uh, she had her daughters there, married to heathen, pagan, demon-worshiping men. And she loved them all so much. She, she, she was so considerate. 
Uh, she, uh, she, she was so able to compromise. Are you here? When you compromise with your dirty, low-down kin folks to go to hell, you're crazy. How many heard what I said? There are millions of people in hell because of kin folks. There are people in this city that when their wicked kin folks come to town, they don't even come to church themselves. They stay home with their kin folks. You're a bright and shining light, aren't you? You're nothing but darkness personified. Until Jesus comes first in your life, he's not first. And whoever comes to see you, if they don't honor you enough. We had a couple of kin folks and came to see us in this city. And I want you to know something. When it was time to go to church, my mother said, sit there till I get back. And, and they wouldn't go to church and she wouldn't stay. She came right up there to that church to sit down and worship God. I said, you've got enough of God in you. They'll respect you later after you get through cussing you. They said, well, they really believe what they believe, but you stay home with them and you're no better than they are. Nobody should ever keep you from the house of God. Otherwise, you don't have enough of the house of God in you. Until God becomes first, he's sure God not going to be second class. And all the people said, Amen. and so these, these, these angels took him out and they pushed him further and further till he wouldn't even feel the heat, wouldn't feel the heat of the city and, and of the burnings there. And so they ran for their lives. Uh, and your point number C here at the bottom of page 15, angels ate dinner with Abraham. That's in Genesis 18, 1. And, and the Lord appeared unto him in, a, in the plains of Mamre and, and sat in the, as he sat in the door, in his tent door, in, in, the, in the heat of the day. They must have come at 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And, and he lifted up his eyes and looked, and, and lo, uh, there, there three men stood by him. And when he saw them, uh, he ran to meet them uh, from, the, from the tent door. And he bowed himself toward the ground and said, my, my Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass, pass not away. Isn't that something? You beg, begging to bless people. They, they would have passed on by, I guess. Pa pass not away, I pray you, uh, uh, from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched in which wash your feet and, and, and rest yourselves under the tree here. They still have that great tree, uh, and and I have I have, I, I, I have some acorns from it in my in my house uh, of the Abraham's tree that he lived under with his tent, and uh, it's a giant tree. They have to hold it up with all kinds of timbers, uh, timbers now down down in Hebron. Not very many people get to see it. The Arabs have it, and they put big locks on the front gate. So, yeah. yeah. But uh, it was an Arab that took me there, and so I was able to get in. And he says, I'll fetch a morsel of bread and comfort your hearts. After that, you shall pass on. For, for therefore are you come. Therefore are you come to your servant. And they said, so do as thou hast said. So they accepted it. And Abraham hastened under the tent under Sarah and said, make ready quickly three measures of fine meal. Knead it, knead it and make cakes upon the hearth. And Abraham ran into the herd and fetched a calf tender and good and gave it unto the young man and, and hastened to dress it. Isn't that something you keep that word fast moving in there? As some of us are slow, we'd miss God every time. And, and he took butter and milk and, and, the, and the calf which he had dressed and he sat before them and he stood by them under the tree and they did eat it. Now, Abraham is our heavenly father, and it says here that he ate butter and milk. If you're Jewish, you listen to that. Uh, butter and milk, along with the beef uh, and, and the kosher feeding, that's an impossibility. If you, if you eat meat, you don't get any milk, you know. Uh, but uh, it, it says here that, they, that, that God himself, that he ate butter and milk and beef all all at the same time. At that D, we'll have to uh, pr pray for it and keep it. 
<laughs> and in our next lesson, uh, we will come to it. Jacob saw angels and so forth. Um, how many are glad we're going slow with it? Yeah. Uh, if you hasten over it, you may not get as much of it as we want you to have. But we do want you to understand that in the future, in the last days, saith God, that we are going to have angelic functions and we're going to have angels working for us, protecting us and keeping us. Let's get acquainted with them. And all the people said, Amen. give the Lord a hand to everybody. <laughs> Hallelujah. You love the Lord? Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.